biggest mistakes that I made with my first dog. A little backstory, I never grew up with any dogs and throughout my whole life my parents kind of instilled that dogs are either dirty or they're gonna bite you. So I wasn't really a big fan of dogs for the first 20 something years of my life and the only dog experience that I had was my friend Ian, he had a golden retriever and every time I would go to his house I kind of was scared of it because I was just like man and the energy was high so you know kind of overwhelming for somebody that's been taught their whole life to basically be afraid of dogs and to avoid them. All right, and for the people that don't know, this is Axel. He is my Australian Labradoodle. He is four years old and he's gonna be turning five this year. So he was the first dog that I got after I finished college and then after I moved out as well, just cause you know, I would not be able to keep a dog at my parents' house. Well, now they're a little more accepting of it, but before, no way. And I think for a lot of people that weren't allowed to have dogs when they were younger, that's usually the time frame, right? After college, you're done, you have money. And then when you're moved out, that's when you can kind of make your own decision to get a dog and you're not bothering your parents. So a little context on that, we were living in an apartment at the time. So potty training was kind of a challenge. So let's get into that. So the first thing that I wanna make sure that everybody should do is crate train your dog. In our situation, we were on the fifth floor and we were living across from the manager at the time and he would be barking crazy every time we put him in the crate, even the first day that he came. So we were like, man, we can't deal with this. So we just let him free roam all the time, which is a terrible idea and you should never do that. So usually what I like to tell people is, make sure to make the crate a very positive place lots of rewards when they go in and don't even start locking it or leaving them yet and that's probably what we should have done but at the time i didn't really know anything about dogs so we just let him free roam all the time and which ended up with him just pottying everywhere at all times we would leave the apartment and just kind of accept it and come back and clean it every single time that we came back which is yeah not fun not good and bit us in the butt in the long run so we let that go for quite a while and we didn't even start crate training him until he was like a year maybe a year and a half and trust me it was brutal because he hated it even more so what i would do based on what i said earlier yeah make it very positive in the beginning and i usually tell people in the beginning it's not going to be pretty it might be a week or two until they're actually comfortable with it and actually quiet in the crate but once you kind of tough it out and get through those first couple of weeks it should be smooth sailing you might have some accidents in there or not you might you definitely will but just be ready to clean up and get ready to put them on a consistent schedule that works with your lifestyle so you can get the best result and least amount of headache when you do it with all my current dogs i made them all potty outside but in the beginning with axel since he wasn't fully vaccinated we use potty pads usually if you have a safe place for your dog such as a backyard and you know you could clean it down and that no wild animals are there i would highly recommend having them just potty on the cement so they're used to just pottying outside and they never think that pottying indoors is even an option because with axel since he did potty indoors on pads and like those little trays he did do a lot of pottying indoors and having accidents because he was just so used to potting indoors and whenever he wanted so yeah i would definitely recommend taking them outside in a clean and safe environment but if you don't have that in your area then that's totally understandable just do what's safe for your dog a very big one that i want to highlight is socialization slash exposure i know a lot of people tell you that your dog needs to meet a bunch of dogs and meet a bunch of people so they get comfortable with it but I do not do that anymore and I highly recommend that you don't do that just because if you let them just be excited and greet a bunch of people and dogs they're going to continue to feel that expectation that they're going to get attention from everybody and later on they're either going to start showing that excitement a lot such as barking, lunging, pulling, jumping or they're just going to be like so focused on other people instead of you when the time really matters such as going out in public and you need them to come back to you but they're so interested in everybody else because they think everybody else is so exciting so what i would do nowadays or with my current dogs anyways since they were puppies i would expose them around a lot of people and dogs as in let them see them but i wouldn't let them interact with them just so later on they just see them as you know whatever they call it social neutrality or coexisting around everything else in the environment where 
they basically learn to ignore everything because it has no significance to them and the only kind of like people and dogs that they interact with are the people within our circle so i'd say friends family and whatever common dogs that you see on a regular basis but they're not going to be friends with everybody and usually most of the clients that i work with anyways they over socialize their dog in the beginning and we're working hard on reversing that so if you start with just exposing and not letting them interact with everybody you'll have a much better start versus the people that are trying to reverse that situation so what if your dog isn't fully vaccinated yet so great question usually with all of my puppies i would either carry them in my arms or i have like one of those little backpack sling things and then still let them see everything or i'll bring a little dog bed out so i could just put them on a dog bed in public places and they could see everything that's going on so later on they're much more prepared at 16 weeks. I know a lot of people try not to even bring their dog out until they have all their vaccinations, but I would highly recommend that you get all the exposure that you can in the safest way possible. Now for house training, I know a lot of people, you just see their dogs free roaming, doing whatever the heck they want and they're living a great life. But in the beginning with your puppy, I would say limit how much free roam or like free access that they have, or at least make sure that they're supervised because in the beginning when dogs don't really know anything, even though you're not directly teaching them to do bad things, they can develop those habits on their own. And the more that you have you know, supervision over what they're doing, the better that you can control it. So in the beginning when they're out in your house, the best way to do it, keep them on leash, expose them to everything around there just so they can't get into anything. They're not chewing stuff. They're not peeing or pooping in random places and you can kind of take them out whenever you need to. And then also when they're not supervised, either have them in a playpen or a crate just so they don't create any bad habits for themselves. And people always ask how long they should do this for. And you know, it really depends on the dog. But what I would do is start like that. That's your baseline. And you can gradually add more freedom as you go, as in like not having them on leash in the house and kind of just directly supervising just to make sure everything is working the way that you want and that you set your dog up for success. Yeah, and I wish we got a trainer sooner, like right when we got Axel. I would say if you're getting a dog and you're a first time dog owner, look up a training place and get it set up before you get your dog just so you are already set up on the right path because when you first get a dog you're going to get a lot of opinions from a lot of people mom might say this dad might say that friend one says this friend two says this sister says whatever and that might jumble you a little bit because you don't know who to follow so it's easier to just pick a professional that's going to take you all the steps of the way and yeah that's what i have for axel and this is what i would definitely make sure to do if you're a first-time dog owner or you're getting a new puppy and you just want to have a strong good start.